Hadrosaurs, otherwise known as the duck-billed dinosaurs, are a famous group of herbivorous dinosaurs. They have long been known in the world of paleontology and have shown up in abundance of paleomedia. However, despite the vast knowledge we possess on hadrosaurs, they are often grossly underestimated in their prowess and are many times portrayed as easy pickings for carnivores. Yet, this wasn't actually the case, and paleontologists have discovered a variety of ways that they were able to be formidable opponents against their hunters. And one of the ways that these duckbills were able to put up a good fight was by using their imposing sizes. Because, as it turns out, many hadrosaurs were quite large, with some being gigantic like the well-known Edmontosaurus, which could reach a staggering 13 meters or 43 feet in length. Yet, there was another hadrosaur that happened to be a close relative of the Edmontosaurus that got even bigger and outsized many of the most notorious theropods to live, while also rivaling certain sauropods, this was the Shantungasaurus. Unlike the iconic Edmontosaurus, the Shantungasaurus did not reside in North America, but rather lived in what is today China, being located in the Shandong Peninsula. This led to its genus name, Shantungasaurus, which roughly translates to Shandong Lizard. It was formally described in 1973 by Chinese scientist Xing Shu and his respective colleagues, who noted its similarities to the Edmontosaurus as well as highlighting the fact that it was a gigantic hadrosaur, the likes which have never yet been seen. The claim that it was a giant stemmed from the remains of over five individuals that were found together in a bone bed. Although none of the located specimens were complete, the paleontologists were still able to create composites by merging various parts of the five hadrosaurs, allowing them to make a more or less complete skeleton. And based on the composites and the size of individual fossils, the team estimated that an adult Shantungasaurus would have been around 15 meters or 49 feet long, while exceptionally large individuals may have reached 16.6 .6 meters or 54 feet in length. Every bit of the Shantungasaurus was monstrous in terms of size, and its head alone was 1.63 meters, or 5.3 feet long. At this stature, it should come as no surprise that the Shintungasaurus was also one hefty dinosaur, weighing up to 16 tons. With its length and weight, not only is it the largest hadrosaur of all time, but also the largest bird hip dinosaur that paleontologists currently know of. Furthermore, it may even be the largest non-sauropod dinosaur, period, with only a few others challenging it in this area. And being the size it was, the Shantungasaurus was truly a giant that dwarfed many of the most famous dinosaurs, like the T-Rex, which was not as long as the Shantungasaurus and was roughly only half its weight. Even certain sauropods, like the Cetiosaurs, were smaller than this hadrosaur. Its imposing size has led to many paleontologists wondering why it got so big. The consensus is that there is no clear reason as to why the Shantungasaurus was as hefty as it was, but what is known is that many times certain factors like climate and the introduction of new predators can provoke animals to evolve much larger than they were previously. Additionally, paleontologists are aware that gigantism was not that uncommon in late Cretaceous Asia, as the Gigantoraptor, the largest known oviraptosaur, also resided in Cretaceous Asia. At the size it was, the Shantungasaurus is probably impervious to most predators, as no carnivore in its environment came close to it in size. The largest adversary it faced would have been the Zhu Cheng Tyrannus, an Asian Tyrannosaur that was an apex predator. It was no doubt a large theropod, but was still quite small when being compared to a fully grown Shantungasaurus, and it alone would not have been able to do much, especially since the Shantungasaurus wasn't just simply big, it also had robust and powerful bones, which likely meant it had a large amount of powerful muscles, allowing it better defenses. This being said, the Zhu Cheng Tyrannus was still a threat to juveniles, and may have hunted in groups, which would have posed a threat to even the largest Shantungasaurus. Although, even if this Tyrannosaur did hunt in packs, the Shantungasaurus didn't only have its side, as most paleontologists agree that it would have also been surprisingly fast. The Shantungasaurus was robust all around, but its hind limbs in particular were extremely well built, and roped with large muscles that would have allowed it quick bursts of speed that were needed to escape predation attempts. Furthermore, the Shantungasaurus was likely a social animal traveling in herds, which would have given it further protection, especially for the younger and smaller individuals in the herd. And with all these defense mechanisms combined, it truly was one tough cookie. However, it was still relatively a gentle giant, at least when it came to its diet, as like other hadrosaurs, it was a herbivore. The skull of Shantungasaurus was equipped with over 1,500 small, densely packed teeth that were situated in rows, and referred to as dental batteries. These teeth, coupled with the Shantungasaurus's relatively strong jaw, 
allowed it to process tough plant matter and mash food thoroughly. It is suspected that the Shantungasaurus would have feasted on low-level vegetation, as well as taller vegetation by rearing up and utilizing its massive body. It also sported a beak, which it used to snip desired pieces of flora, almost like having built-in scissors. This way of feeding was quite similar to that of its close relative, Edmontosaurus, although one area that it differed in, perhaps, was its nose. More specifically, its nasal opening, as it was proportionally very wide, leading to speculations that the Shantungasaurus had an enlarged growth made of soft tissue in real life, which if present, could have been used for display. Besides this possible growth, the Shantungasaurus was in many ways quite plain. Being similar to other hadrosaurs and superficially identical to the Edmontosaurus, minus the size difference. Though, with its stature, it didn't have to have any fancy traits in order to thrive in its environment of late Cretaceous China. As mentioned, the Shantungasaurus resided in the Shandong Peninsula, which back then was composed of narrow canyons, floodplains, and braided rivers. Additionally, the climate was relatively warm and dry. This was a land that was rich and diverse in dinosaur life, including some rather well-known dinosaurs like the Cynoceratops. Other dinosaurs in the area included two other ceratops, an oviraptosaur, two types of ankylosaur, the previously mentioned tyrannosaur, and the sauropod Zhu Chang Titan. Non-dinosaurs were also present, as the remains of a turtle and an unidentified crocodilian have also been located. The Shantungasaurus lived alongside these animals in ancient China some 77 million years ago, give or take, during the Middle and Late Campanian, one of the Cretaceous's last ages. Fossil records show that the Shantungasaurus was not present when the asteroid hit Earth, meaning it disappeared beforehand, and while the exact cause for its disappearance is not known, what paleontologists do know is that during the late Cretaceous, Asia underwent certain climate changes which may have delivered the killing blow to the largest hadrosaur to ever walk the Earth.